Ooh, that's a good one, too. 2x, what's your first thought? The low magnification. Yes. Yes, very good. But it's good to think of that, that lichen planar pilaris and lupus erythematosus and, to some extent, uh, CCCA, central centrifugal centrifugal alopecia, in the setting of on the scalp, those can all have some degree of overlapping features, fibrosis and inflammation, and the kind of pattern of those mixed with the clinical can kind of help sort out which one it is. But here, we're probably somewhere else not on the scalp, I imagine. I think we're probably on the face here, but it could be the trunk. I might be wrong. And what we've got... The, what's that? The, the keratin plugging is also, I feel like, very helpful. I don't know if that's significant. You know, yes, like the very good. Yes, that's right. So this is discoid lupus erythematosus. Now, in real life, I find it hard to reliably sort out the different types of lupus just on biopsy. I really feel clinical plays a role there. And occasionally, even other connective tissue diseases can mimic lupus and vice versa. So, so I do think there's some flexibility in subtyping. But this, to me, looks like a good classic, what it's supposed to look like, example of discoid lupus. And clinically, this was a lesion of discoid lupus erythematosus. So from low power, I'll tell you what I see. Number one, I see superficial and deep, pretty brisk inflammation that even though we're far away, it looks like it's probably lymphocytes, okay? So peri perivascular, superficial and deep, and periadnexal. We can't really see the vessels well in here. Probably there's some vessel down here and some up here, but there's so many adnexa here, it's hard to tell if the inflammation's around the, the vessels or around the adnexa. But we definitely know there is inflammation around the adnexa too, right? We've got inflammation around the infundibulum of multiple hair follicles and deep around the follicle and around the eccrine coil. So we have superficial and deep, perivascular and periadnexal lymphocytic infiltrate, okay? You may have some plasma cells in it. That's relatively common. You usually don't have very many eosinophils um, in it, okay? So that's it. Superficial and deep, perianexal and perivascular, and also interface alteration at the epidermis in most cases. So that can range from vacuolar interface to lichenoid interface. I'll show you closer in a minute. It can vary from case to case. I think discoid lupus is a good example of how vacuolar interface and lichenoid interface are both types of interface dermatitis that exist on a spectrum microscopically. In the books, we often teach them as like different chapters. And it's true that some diseases are usually vacuolar and not lichenoid and vice versa. But in real life, they exist much more on a spectrum. And I think you should keep an open mind that those two things have overlap. That's my view. And then, like uh, like uh, you said, the plugged keratin-filled dilated follicles of great classic finding for discoid lupus in particular. Let's look closer. Here, we see occasional dying keratinocytes, like right here. But really, the interface itself, the basement membrane, looks pretty clean. So there doesn't look like there's much active interface going on here, but there are a couple dying keratinocytes. Over here, though, it's a little bit folded, but look, multiple dying keratinocytes. The basal layer is getting a little jagged. To me, that's a sign that we've got some kind of burned out interface where the keratinocytes have died. The basal layer is getting disrupted. You can see it actually even better down here, extending down the hair follicle epithelium. And I find that pretty helpful. When you've got interface in the epidermis and going down a follicle, definitely start thinking about lupus. Sometimes other things can show that. Lichen planus doesn't usually involve the follicles very much, but I've seen examples that did, uh, that fit for lichen planus better clinically and were not lupus. But here, look, we've got apoptotic keratinocytes or cytoid bodies, vacuolar change, a ratty, ragged, disrupted basal layer instead of the nice clean basal layer like we saw over on the right there. This is interface dermatitis involving the hair follicle epithelium. And it's also involving up here the epithelium of the epidermis. There's dying keratinocytes there. And it may have either totally absent burnt out inflammation with zones of like thick basement membrane and scar, or it may be thick and like lichenoid. It can run a range, okay? And then the dilated follicles plugged with keratin. So that's great. Discoid lupus. Very good. And of course, it's got to fit clinically too. And some people find um, CD123 helpful because it highlights clusters of plasma cytodendritic cells in, in many cases of lupus. I personally find it kind of a challenging stain to interpret, but in any case, for test purposes, know that CD123 clusters is a finding that favors lupus. Not just discoid, but lupus erythematosus in general. 